So we're starting a new unit in Math 7 Accelerated, and the unit is about comparison statements. Now comparison statements are often used in advertisements, in billboards, in commercials, and they're usually um, written in a way that the reader or the person watching the television commercial will understand that the product that they're watching is better. Is, it's the greater product, more people like it, and that's usually why they use comparison statements to figure that out and to share that information as quickly as possible. So an example of a comparison statement just says, which soft drink do you like better? Bold the cola or cola nova? And it says, taste the cola taste test for yourself. So a couple things we need to know before we get into comparison statements are um, some vocabulary and that is ratio, proportion, percent. Now, ratios, um, proportions, and percents are basically notation that we use for comparison statements. So the one that you're probably most familiar with out of these three is a percent. A percent is written with a percent sign like this. And what I like to do to remember percent is use the one line and each of the zeros to make myself the number 100. And that's because a percent means a number out of every 100. So no matter what the sample size is, no matter how many people I ask, what's your favorite kind of cola, I'm going to simplify that number to a percent with a denominator of 100. So it's out of every 100 people, you know, um, 67 prefer Bolda Cola, however you're going to do that. So that's what percent means. And you should remember this from math 6 when we talked about fractions, decimals, and percents. So a proportion is set up similarly to a fraction. They say something like um, 57 out of 80 people prefer Bolda Cola to Cola Nova, or what, however the proportion is being written. It's being written as a fraction. So the top number in our fraction terms is our numerator. And that's usually the number of people that agree with the comparison statements. And the denominator is usually the number of people they ask the question. So in this case, they probably surveyed um, 80 people and 57 agreed with what they asked. Lastly, the ratio. Um, the ratio is written sideways and it's written with a colon in the middle. And it's written in simplest form. So usually a ratio could start out as a very large number, like um, 50 to 75 people prefer whatever your product is. And that's the way you read it. You would say 2 to 3, and then you would make your comparison statement. So that colon represents the word 2. So for every two people, there are three people. For every two people who prefer Bolda Cola, there are three people who prefer Cola Nova. So that's the comparison that you're making there. And like I said, um, if you have a ratio, it's usually simplified. So when you start out, that number might have been much larger and you had to find um, a common factor and simplify it down as a comparison, as a ratio statement. So. Here's an example of a couple of different comparison statements. These are all about Bolda Cola and Cola Nova. And we're going to think about what each statement means. So you might want to pause the video for a second and copy these statements into your notebook, leaving a little bit of room for interpretation. Okay. So the first statement says, in a taste test, people who preferred Bolda Cola outnumbered those who preferred Cola Nova by a ratio of 17,139 to 11,000 
426. So number one tells us the ratio of Volta Cola to Cola Nova is equal to 17,139 to 11,426. So if you could find a common factor between those two numbers, you would definitely want to simplify because they're very complicated, they're very large numbers, and they're hard to think about in a consumer type scale. The second statement says, in a taste test, 5,713 more people preferred Volta Cola. So, when you have Volta Cola compared to Cola Nova, you have to add 5,713 people to the number of people who like Cola Nova in order to equal the number of people who like Volta Cola because Volta Cola is 5,713 more than Cola Nova. You could also write that Volta Cola minus those 5,713 people would be equal to the number of people who like Cola Nova. The third comparison statement says in a taste test, 60% of the people prefer Volta Cola. So what that's telling you is 60 out of every 100 people they ask prefer Volta Cola. Number four says, in a taste test, people who preferred Volta Cola outnumbered those who preferred Cola Nova by a ratio of three to two. So again, Volta Cola to Cola Nova is equal to 3 to 2. So which statement would be most effective in advertising Volta Cola? Which of these statements is the easiest for an average consumer, somebody who's not um, a mathematician, to relate to and realize Wow, people like Volta Cola more than Cola Nova. That's what I should buy, right? That's the point of a comparison statement. You want somebody to agree with you and to be swayed into purchasing your product over another. So um, specifically, we've got a couple of things going on here. The ratio, or statement number one, has some very large numbers. It seems really complex. Statement number two is also a comparison by equation. The average person is not going to sit down and write this. And if they do, it almost seems like the first way we wrote this statement makes it seem like Cola Nova has more, like you're adding to Cola Nova. It's not quite clear if you're not familiar with the mathematics behind the comparison statement. Um, statement number three is a percentage. People Percentages are common among advertisements. So I would say that's a pretty good one. And statement number four is a very simplistic ratio. It says every three people like Volta Cola compared to two people who like Cola Nova. So you clearly see three is greater than two. More people like Volta Cola compared to Cola Nova. Once we have all this information, it says are all the statements based on the same data. And how do you know? How do we know that all of these statements are accurate? That they're all, they all mean exactly the same thing? Well, we know that statement one says Volta Cola to Cola Nova is 17,139 compared to 11,426. So I'm going to take that statement. And that's kind of our main given statement. That's kind of what we want to look at compared to everything else that we've been doing. We really want to know which of these works. 